So in H.G. Wells' classic book, War of the Worlds, from the late 1890s, he depicted an invasion of the British Isles by a race of technologically advanced Martians, and I figured today we could take a closer look at how that invasion played out, some of the tactics the Martians used, and really the way that book depicted an alien invasion. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. Now, one quick thing to get out of the way before we begin, I will be focusing primarily on the invasion depicted in the original novel, and not the ones depicted in the various different adaptations of the story throughout history, although, obviously, for visuals, I will be using clips from various movies and television shows that followed the similar plotline. So first things first, let's get something out of the way real quick. The story does take place in the late 1890s and early 1900s. It's set vaguely around the time it's written, even though an exact date is never given. So as far as human defenders go, we're not looking at tanks and airplanes, we're looking at artillery guns, infantry, and cavalry, the same weapons you'd see deployed just before the First World War. As for the Martians, they use their iconic tripod walkers, their fighting machines as they're formally called in the books. These three-legged behemoths tower over humanity, raining down death and destruction with an array of weapons, notably a heat ray, which is basically just a high-energy laser, and a black gas or black smoke, which is essentially poison gas. On top of this, they use several weapon systems specifically against unarmed civilian populations, things like the tentacles, which were used for collecting humans for future uses. But since I've already done an entire video on the tripod war machines, I'm not really going to focus on the weapons or the tools that they used, and instead on the tactics. Like I mentioned at the opening of the video, the invasion appears to really only be of the British Isles. There's never any evidence presented that the Martians have landed anywhere else or have begun an invasion of anywhere else. They seem to be specifically targeting the island of Great Britain. Now this sort of makes sense within the context of when the book was written. At the time, the British Empire was the most powerful nation on Earth, and it could be conceivable that if a alien power wanted to topple the governments of Earth, you would simply focus on the most powerful one and work out from there. But the invasion itself was actually rather limited. So let's talk about Martian logistics. So the Martians traveled to Earth within these cylinders, which are implied to be bullet-shaped projectiles fired out of a vast gun constructed on the surface of Mars. It's also noteworthy that in the late 1800s, this was thought of as the most likely means for space travel was a very large gun. Each of these cylinders contained three tripod war machines and only three, and ultimately there were only 10 cylinders launched at the Earth, totaling only 30 Martian war machines. Add on top of that that these war machines are not invincible as they were depicted in future renditions of War of the Worlds, and it starts to paint a picture of a Martian force that is really a bare-bones expeditionary force that is honestly rather fragile. So the Martians have to use very interesting tactics as they advance through the British countryside. Basically, after the cylinders land and open, they secure the immediate area around the cylinders using the heat ray to clear out any resistance, and once they have the area pretty firmly locked down, they can assemble and begin utilizing the war machines. These three war machines would move at a vast pace, sweeping across the countryside, making very careful selections about where they target. These war machines would mostly focus on logistics and infrastructure, targeting roads, rail lines, and telegraph lines. This served the purpose of confusing the British military response. This made it very, very hard for a defending army to coordinate the locations of these tripods, for example, to better position their forces, making it nearly impossible to get the jump on these war machines. And the Martians would also understandably come down pretty hard on anywhere where there was stiff resistance, simply burning entire swaths of countryside if there were British guns hidden in the tree lines. But there was another purpose that played into the Martians' attempts to focus on infrastructure and disabling the means of communication and transportation. On top of the real-world applications of destroying things like telegraph lines and rail lines, which would be preventing the movement of troops and the communication between command and the forces in the field, this also served to sow chaos within the local population and prevent vast quantities of humans from escaping the advancing Martian threat. Now, as the book shows us in great detail, this actually leads to massive chaos in the outskirts of London as people flee the city as the Martians approach, tearing themselves apart in a desperate effort to get away from the Martian advance. This is actually one of the key themes of the book, by the way, is not just the terror that the Martians bring to Earth, but the terror that we unleash on ourselves in moments of dire circumstance. 
it appears as though this is one of the goals of the Martians all along, to sow political trouble and internal strife within human society, as well as carry out their open military invasion. Still, all of this came down to assaults on infrastructure like rail lines and telegraph lines, and focused assaults on civilian population centers and command and control centers, which is pretty par for the course for military strategy at the time. Now, we all know how the invasion ends, with the Martians falling victim to ailments that humans had long since become immune to, things like the common cold, for example, and ultimately being forced to withdraw from their invasion of Earth and carry out a subsequent invasion of Venus instead. And while there are many iconic elements from War of the Worlds in the way that the Martian invasion was depicted, one of the most visually distinctive and iconic is the tripod war machine, the Martian fighting machine. And if you'd like to learn more about the Martian fighting machines themselves, how they were utilized, and how they were designed, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I'd like you to let me know down in the comments whether you think these tactics make sense from an invading Martian perspective. Do you think, looking at the war goals that the Martians appear to have, that these tactics would be effective ways of achieving those, or do you think that these are a little too human as far as military objectives go? And if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover from science fiction, leave it down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time. Bye.